you are watching Redicon. This is a young patient with hip pain. And when you compare the right or the left side, there's obvious concentric uh, joint space loss of the left hip. So you've seen that abnormality. You look at the sacroiliac joints, they, they appear unremarkable. Looking at the margin of the film, looking at the proximal femora. So the, the salient abnormality on this is there is marked joint space loss of the left hip joint. So you ask for a previous film. The examiner gives you a film three months back, and you can see the joint spaces were relatively well preserved. So, it, so a rapid process has happened. That's the beauty of asking for a previous film. The previous film will give you a timeline. You have to build a, build a timeline of pathology. You have to, uh, to, to imagine, you have to assess for the process. So when there is rapid joint space loss, in a matter of a few months, you have to think about either infection, like in this case, this patient was a sickle, sickle cell disease patient. Well, that, that history is usually not given. There are usually signs of sickle cell on the, on the film, like head-shaped vertebra or um, uh, things like that. I mean, this patient, this, look at the MR. I mean, the patient has got AVN of the, of the femoral head. There's all this inflammation that um, uh, enhancing effusion of the hip joint and extending into the adjacent gluteus minimus muscle. So this was septic arthritis of the, of the hip joint in a sickle cell disease patient. In contrast to these two cases, so on the, uh, on the left of the screen, you're seeing an, a, an elderly patient who presented with worsening right hip joint pain. And you can see when you compare the right with the left side, there is diffuse joint space loss, near kind of complete obliteration, kind of ankylosis. Whenever you see this, this is not osteoarthritis. This could be inflammatory arthritis or septic arthritis. Inflammatory or infective arthritis, you always have to think about. And looking at the, uh, at the image uh, on the right, this is a much younger patient, but now the pathology is on the, uh, on the left side. Again, diffuse joint space loss. So think about septic arthritis or inflammatory arthritis. Okay. Moving on. So this is an adult patient presented with hip pain. So you keep looking, and then suddenly your eye catches the hyperdensity of the left femoral head. Could this be AVN? Well, it will be atypical for AVN to cause that amount of sclerosis without causing any contra deformity of the uh, of the left femoral head. And the joint space is maintained. So it's a bit atypical for AVN, so you have to think about something else. So, adult patient, sclerotic, diffuse sclerosis of, of a bone. So why can't it be an osteoblastic metastasis or a primary lesion that causes reactive sclerosis? So in an adult patient, when you see a diffuse abnormality of the femoral head, diffuse sclerosis of the femoral head, think, don't forget osteoblastic metastasis. Look around, is there any other focus that you can see on this bone? Nothing obvious, yeah. But this was uh, a patient with prosthetic CA. So osteoblastic metastases, don't forget them. And they're usually from adenocarcinoma, whether it's from the prostate, from the genital urinary tract, or GI. Okay, another case, much younger patient. But now you're seeing, again, sclerosis involving the femoral head, but extending into the adjacent femoral leg. But again, the important point is the contour of the femoral head is preserved. The sclerosis is, is disproportionate to the, uh, it doesn't kind of tally with the normal contour of the femoral head. Had it been AVN with that amount of sclerosis, you would have seen contour deformity or joint space loss. So this is again a patient with a metastatic uh, urothelial carcinoma. So, well, I, I coined the term this ivory hip. I mean, you talk about ivory vertebra, ivory phalanx, things like that, which can, I mean, there's a long differential for that, but osteoblastic metastases, lymphoma, uh, uh, things like that, pedis disease for that matter. So, so if you can have it in the spine, why not in the femoral head? So just remember that. 
You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for new courses. For more modules and radiology CMEs, please visit www.radicon.org. Thank you.